When you end a toxic relationship with a narcissist, you probably think it's over. But very often, the narcissist has other ideas. In fact, more often than not, the narcissist will do something to suck you back into their drama or even fully back into the relationship using a technique we call hoovering. So what is hoovering? Well, just in case you're new around here, hoovering, of course, named after the famous vacuum cleaner company, is what we call it when the narcissist tries to suck you back in after you've left them or ended the relationship or after they've discarded you. They might use some kind of personal problem or even a dramatic issue to pull you back in, or maybe they'll use love bombing. Hoovering is always an attempt to obtain more narcissistic supply from you, and in many cases, it can be an attempt to reconcile the relationship. It can also just be a form of manipulation that they use to get you to break no contact. So what are the signs of a hoovering narcissist? Well, the first thing you need to remember here is that there is no level to which a narcissist will not stoop. Nothing is off limits for them. Here are a few ways narcissists might engage in hoovering you. Number one, finally saying that one thing you've been dying to hear. Yeah, narcissists are infamous for holding things over your head and for feeling justified in not giving you what you want and what you need in a relationship. For example, if you were dating a narcissist for 10 years and you just wanted them to pop the question or whatever, well, they might hoover you back in with a diamond ring and a proposal if that's why you left. Or if you were married to the narcissist and you always wanted a baby, guess what? Suddenly they got parental feelings. They might try to hoover you back in with an offer to have a baby with you. Which brings me to number two, future faking you. They are known for their future faking ways, you know, where they promise you this amazing life together and never follow through with it. Yeah, many narcissists will use future faking as a way to suck you back in. They will promise you the world. Maybe they promise to buy you a house, or maybe they promise to finally go to couples counseling with you, or to really stop cheating on you this time. Most often they fail to deliver, but they use future faking in order to get you back into their clutches and back into that relationship. Which brings me to number three, getting you involved in their drama. Now, as someone who has struggled with codependency, you're especially susceptible to helping people in need. That couldn't be more true for someone you've loved Love or have loved. So a narcissist might come to you with some big problem or issue in their lives that they need your help with. This could be something as serious as the death of a loved one that they just can't make it through without your support or something as simple as an argument with a friend or a coworker. One example I gave earlier is that client that I mentioned whose ex tried to hoover her back in by bringing his sick dog to her house and asking her to help take care of him. Like I said, there are no limits for narcissists. That brings me to number four, the accidental butt dial. This is when they accidentally call you or accidentally sent you a message meant for someone else. It's a sneaky one. They will often accidentally call your phone or text you something random at mysterious times so that you're enticed to call or text back or ask what they need, what they meant by that text or why they called in the first place. Then of course, they're gonna pretend it was an accident or that they meant to call or text someone else. And before you know it, what's gonna happen? You're in a full on conversation during which the narcissist will try to pull you back into that circle of supply on some level. Which brings me to number five, swearing they can't live without you. Once the narcissist recognizes that you have truly moved on, a lot of them will use a resounding declaration of love. They'll claim they can't live without you. They'll say they're your soulmate or you're theirs, and they'll even pretend, pretend to admit their own flaws and faults in order to get you to fall for it. This will effectively begin an entirely new period of love bombing, all designed to suck you back into the relationship. That brings me to number six, engaging flying monkeys to do their dirty work. Yeah, narcissists always have a crew of flying monkeys on hand. These are people that are happy to do their bidding for them. This may include flying monkeys who are willing to help them manipulate you without remorse, and it might also include some unwilling flying monkeys, as in well-meaning people who really care about you but who fall for the narcissist's lies, and even though they're really trying to help you, they're still messing with your life. See, narcissists will send them your way with worries and concerns about your or the narcissist's well being all designed to get you to communicate directly with the narcissist or indirectly through the flying monkey and ultimately to manipulate you with drama. That brings me to number seven, suddenly recognizing the error of their ways. In a last ditch effort to get you back into the relationship, some narcissists will come to you in tears. They'll tell you they're a terrible person, even admitting everything they did wrong, which is often done by just parroting back exactly what you've been trying to tell them for the entirety of your relationship. They'll say things like, I know I don't treat you right and you really do deserve better than me in order to soften you up and pull you back in. Number eight, using fear and intimidation to bully you. Some narcissists are even gonna go so far as to try to scare you back into the relationship. They might also use guilt or blame shifting to force you back in. And bullying is a very common manipulation tactic for most narcissists. Abuse amnesia. It is something that happens among people who are chronically abused over a period of time. It could be emotional abuse or physical abuse.
abuse. Ironically enough, it often leads an abused person to say something positive about a person if you ask them how their relationship was with that person. This is very common, especially with people who were abused by a parent. They often don't even recognize that they have been abused. And if they do, they minimize that they have a high threshold for abuse because it's something that happened their whole lives. Now the positive response that they give, maybe it's just denial, but often it's the fact is that the abuse victim truly doesn't recall the abuse or doesn't see it as abuse. It can be a natural outcome of what is called confirmation bias, which basically means that a person didn't want that to happen, whatever that was, the abuse or whatever it was, and instead they, they forget that and they replace it with what they would have rather seen happen. It's also common in situations where the abused person is hoping that the abuser will sort of change. And so they, instead of seeing the abuser as an abuser, they see the person as someone who is just about to turn the corner and change. And so they see the abuse as almost like a relapse for that person as opposed to abuse. They sort of separate themselves from it. Ironically enough though, when someone starts to talk about the abuse in a situation where say they go to a therapist or a coach and they start to kind of recount the events of their childhood or their relationship that they were abused in, they very often find, oh my gosh, I remember this, I remember this, I remember this. And then the whole world can come crashing down for them until they work through that. I have one client in particular who I'm thinking of right now who, when I first started talking to this person, said only positive things about a parental figure in this person's life. And I'm, I'm kind of being vague here because I'm not trying to share any client information, but over the course of our discussions over the months, this person recalled quite a bit of abuse growing up. And it has been difficult for her, but she's working through it, and it just turns out to be a good thing to be aware of it. Now, here's something important that I want you to know about abuse amnesia. It's exactly what allows a narcissist to hoover us back in. You know that old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder? Well, abuse amnesia counts on that. Hoovering counts on that. So as you spend time away from the narcissist, they're more easily able to suck you back in if you have abuse amnesia. One of the best ways, in my opinion, to avoid abuse amnesia is to, first of all, acknowledge that you were abused. Secondly, make a list of all the reasons you don't want to go back to that person, all the things they did to you, all the reasons you need to stay separate from that person. Keep the list in a drawer or in a safe or wherever you need to keep it so that when you feel obligated or when you feel tempted to go back and when you start to forget the bad things and only remember the good things about that person and then they hoover you, you go pull that list out and remind yourself why you left or why you want to stay away at the very least. The next question on the minds of nearly any narcissistic abuse survivor is at this point usually, how can I avoid the hoover? So here are a few of the most important things you can do. First up, number one, remember that knowledge is power. Simply be aware of the fact that the narcissist might try to hoover you and become familiar with the signs of hoovering. That's what you're doing right now. That in itself can be enough to help you avoid falling for it. Knowledge is power. That brings me to number two, use the gray rock method. As in don't show any emotion and only talk to the narcissist, if you must, about what you must. If you have no shared children or no shared business, you can absolutely go completely no contact. Number three, if possible, completely eliminate their ability to contact you. Change your phone number, block them on social media, and don't answer the door if they come a call in. Focus on you for once. Take the time you need to do self-care, to do that redecorating project you've been meaning to do, or even to just do more nice stuff for yourself. You deserve it, and it'll help you distract yourself from the narcissist's hoovering attempts, if nothing else. Which brings me to number four, reconnect with your old friends and make some new ones in the process. While you absolutely should not jump into any romantic relationships too soon after ending one with a narcissist, because obviously you should heal first, it's a great idea to dive into your friendships. Since most likely you've lost touch with your old friends as a result of the narcissist isolating you during the relationship, what better way could there be to celebrate the end of it? Reach out to your old friends and consider making new ones by getting involved in a group of like-minded people. Maybe that means taking a class or going to church or synagogue or joining a local club. You can also look at sites like meetup.com to find groups of local people with similar interests. And hey, if that feels like too much, don't forget, you can always start with one of my online support groups for survivors of narcissistic abuse. You can check those out at the link right here. But even if you do fall for hoovering and you get back into the relationship with a narcissist, I want you to remember that chances are you will not see the change you want, or if you do, they will be temporary. Because once the narcissist knows that you're back in and they've got their hooks firmly implanted in you again, 
they're gonna go back to the way they've always been and it might happen sooner than you would expect. Don't fall for the Hoover. Don't fall for these sneaky tricks that narcissists pull to get you back into the relationship. You deserve better than that, my friend. And if you can get through this hard part, the part that feels so painful, you will be glad that you held out and resisted because you will see that life is so much better on the other side, I promise you. So this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you been hoovered by a narcissist? Has a narcissist ever tried to do anything sneaky to suck you back into the relationship? Did you fall for it or not? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Now listen, if you have an experience with this, I would genuinely appreciate it if you would share it below because you can help our fellow survivors to maybe avoid a Hoover in the future or to not feel so alone if it does happen to them. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life and hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you right there and right there. And while you're here, hit the subscribe button right there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.